hope we'll start recording. Yeah. Good morning, uh, one and all. Uh, there are 53 students at the moment, 12 students to join. Uh, uh, the lobby is open. They can any uh, time join during the lecture hour. And uh, uh, good, uh, today uh, we are going to have an overview. This is very first lecture of our uh, course MWE5026 Vehicle Dynamics course, which is a core course, core program course for MTech Automotive Engineering students. Also, this course uh, is acting as an elective course for other uh, post graduation specialization like CAD CAM and mechatronics students as well. <coughs> And uh, uh, what does this course? Uh, why is this course is very important? And core course for automotive engineers, because you see today uh, this course is an important course to understand the characteristics of your vehicle. If you do not understand the dynamics of your vehicle, it is very uh, difficult to justify uh, 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 the design aspects and the operational condition of your vehicle requirement at different scenarios of operations uh, are uh, not justified. Uh, you know that uh, today's era, uh, currently, we have a lot of uh, advancement challenges in uh, vehicle manufacturers' uh, perspective. Our vehicle is uh, going to be more and more intelligent vehicles. So it's not the uh, only uh, vehicle that we have seen some uh, decade back. Uh, currently, we have been using manual operated uh, uh, vehicle, uh, most of the uh, domestic vehicles. Uh, these vehicles are now going to be uh, getting intelligent because of advancement, electronics, control system, machine vision technology, artificial intelligence, neural networks. So these all are of uh, upcoming uh, data science, upcoming uh, domain, which is going to influence uh, not uh, for that matter of vehicles, also for that matter of mechanical systems. So uh, though this uh, core branch of mechanical engineering is ever green, and uh, nowadays you see that because of these advancements, you see that these uh, uh, upcoming uh, uh, um, uh, scenarios to meet, we have to equip ourselves to understand the fundamentals of dynamics so that uh, we would be able to have an advancement or development that is expected in near future in vehicle technology. So the vehicle can be uh, already uh, semi-automated vehicle or fully automated vehicle uh, that all we are talking on and uh, see there are uh, a lot of uh, revolution that takes place on the power unit of the vehicle. It is not uh, going to be conventional IC engine driven vehicle in near uh, future, maybe after two, three decades. You see uh, most of the vehicles are replenished and maybe obsolete or operated by IC engines. So they may be uh, equipped with uh, electric uh, prime uh, uh, mover. So you will have electric vehicles completely replacing this uh, existing scenario. Or you may have hybrid kind of vehicle. So you may have vehicle, um, you know, uh, uh, these uh, uh, technology e-mobility is requirement of ecological aspects. Or uh, uh, no, um, even if there are uh, uh, vehicles with IC engine, their advancement of uh, emission, if you look at, they are as good as going to be. Uh, as an e-vehicle and as good as going to be like an e-vehicle uh, uh, in terms of noise and vibration characteristics. So that kind of uh, research that has been currently taking on even with the IC engine technology. Uh, so the, the, this is what is the background when you look at uh, this course uh, is playing an important role unless you understand this course clearly learning this course, you would not appreciate the behavior of vehicle requirement for the vehicle advancement development design and its requirement of operational state uh, in different scenarios. That's the reason why you do have this course. And that is what is motivating all of us to uh, uh, look at this uh, dynamic aspects of the course. So if you say uh, in a simple term, what is dynamics? It's nothing but understanding uh, or playing around the system of forces acting on the mechanical system, which is not under rest condition, which is under uh, moving condition. So the mechanical system, when can it move when it is not completely constrained? So if you look at a passenger car parked in a parking lot, it is uh, parked and brakes are there on a handbrake and it is stationary. But the moment you start your vehicle and you want to take your vehicle out on the highways or move from one point to the other, the vehicle is partially constrained. When the vehicle is partially constrained, we need to understand the system of forces acting on a vehicle. How are they playing a role? to make the effect in the vehicle to get translated from one point to the other. That's what in 
uh, short to say what is dynamics right so uh, um, and it is simply a physical science of playing around with the system of forces on moving bodies and uh, importantly which is going to govern rigid body uh, dynamics your newton euler uh, equation fundamental equations so this is what is in background uh, we are now today um, um, starting with our course so what am i going to do i'm going to share my uh, slides and uh, we will see that uh, um, the briefing of course content objectives and outcomes and then uh, what is our assessment procedure for the semester and uh, this is what uh, uh, in brief this uh, period that we are going to look at so that we will have a frame set in our mind to learn this course systematically is that fine to all of you uh, are you getting me is it sensible to follow me i need some response i have uh, an excel sheet open yes. uh, so whenever i get a response i would uh, make a note of that uh, maybe uh, not in this lecture but i would uh, always uh, have some interaction during interaction those students do respond i do make a note and give a uh, uh, um, you know uh, credit for such students and this is essentially to make all of you to get involved and uh, i am sure that you all are postgraduate students you know the importance of this course uh, uh, not only it is placed in your uh, curriculum also you would have been uh, now in the second semester discuss with your seniors and you see you could have attended some of the guest lectures from industries uh, and today because of online classes you do have lot many uh, uh, online classes are uh, coming just you google it or you have some uh, 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 linkedin connection you see there are floated uh, online classes on a specific topics of vehicle dynamics or related area so you could have been excited and uh, to know so this is what is an advantage of doing a course for say maybe for 45 hours of listening and doing some specific assignments and uh, carrying out some projects confirm that you are going to have a strong uh, uh, hold of this dynamics aspects of vehicles so what does that uh, vehicles that we are going to study in our vehicle dynamics when you say vehicle it is very generic the vehicle can be on ground the vehicle can be on air the vehicle can be on water and we are not going to study the vehicles on air or ground or on water so we are going to look at the vehicles on the ground so which can be a constrained vehicle which can be uh, free vehicles on ground so constrained vehicle means what do i say locomotives if you look at uh, they are constrained to go on rail trams is look at bengal state you see there are um, uh, no trams uh, till date uh, you can say uh, there are road vehicles as well as uh, trams so they are guided to go on uh, rails so those are guided vehicles so our focus of dynamics is not on this guided vehicles our focus on vehicles are on the road vehicles again if you look at the road vehicles we can group as those vehicle as uh, vehicle which are on on road or off the road vehicle so they are free to go on ground so they are called ground vehicles and uh, uh, not guided vehicles they are free to go on ground any way Um, uh, they can be on the road or off the road so those are those are on the off road those are called off road vehicle maybe earth moving vehicle uh, or uh, truck tra tra tractor which are on the agriculture fields these are all something on off the road vehicle and on road vehicles are the passenger vehicles or uh, trucks semi trailers uh, your uh, three wheelers or two wheelers all vehicles which are on the road are called road vehicles so we are going to look at specifically uh, passenger cars or uh, three axle vehicle like truck semi trailers in our course so this is what is our focus and their dynamics so the principle that you learn on the, uh, are can be extended to uh, not only uh, uh, with the ground vehicle uh, uh, on the roads also off the road vehicle uh, you you would gain the confidence look at those uh, text books or the um, uh, literatures of off road vehicle and confidently go ahead understanding of them uh, because this is something that building on uh, if you do one and then uh, what are the uh, other additional thing so uh, that is also an advantage of this doing course in first hand and uh, you can also extend the uh, dynamic principle on air vehicles or on submarines uh, if you have a good understanding of fluid mechanics as well along with your rigid body mechanics right so this is all in background uh, let me start to today's class sharing uh, my um, uh, presentation <clears throat> hope all of you are able to see this uh, screen uh, are you 
able to see yes. this is lecture number one and uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. yes sir yes sir we do have our introduction class and uh, see that uh, the very first slide is a classical slide i always uh, start my discourse look putting this slide uh, right from my beginning of teaching uh, in the previous semesters as well why because this is taken from a classical textbook called ground vehicle theory of ground vehicles by wong which is one of your reference textbook which we would be extensively following during our uh, uh, course uh, in this semester we do also have some additional uh, textbooks which i would share during our lecture our, uh, uh, show what are those uh, right so this is a classical flow diagram which in which is bringing in the complete perspective of vehicle dynamic course it is essentially connect uh, the interaction between the driver the vehicle which we are looking at it and the ground system on which the vehicle uh, do go right so if you look at uh, in this flow chart uh, you see these three systems are clear here we have driver we have driver we have vehicle and we have the ground system so what are our ground system the surface irregularities so vehicle on the ground so the surface irregularities is input to the vehicle aerodynamic inputs so this is not ground system it is an air uh, uh, that is impinging on the vehicle as it is been uh, cruising as it is going in high speeds these are very important so this is also an input to the vehicle and ground conditions so ground conditions can be of uh, uh, like we say the vehicle can be on road the vehicle can be on off the road or if it is on the road the vehicle surface can be of uh, 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 uniform uh, or the surface uh, not necessarily always uniform there can be difference in surfaces uh, uh, because of the condition of the road uh, environmental conditions uh, like uh, road can be wet or dry or off road can be wet uh, so there's so many so the ground condition and the surface irregularities aerodynamics these are all are what is coming from ground system to the vehicle as an input uh, when you look at a vehicle and driver driver of course is in the vehicle and he is also giving an input to the vehicle in terms of uh, um, uh, abc like he can accelerate vehicle he can brake vehicle or he can uh, do neither of them uh, by having a, a application of clutch <laughs> so this is what is an input uh, uh, from his foot and you see primarily the other input is the steering system input uh, without which you cannot have your vehicle to uh, go as the way you intend to drive your vehicle so the driving system on uh, the important input is steering system uh, as well as this abc and of course uh, uh, you cannot drive uh, closing your eyes a driver cannot uh, drive closing his eyes and uh, operating with the hand and foot his eyes are very important so the visual and other inputs are the first input to the driver to uh, take a first decision to uh, give an input so this is in first hand he looks at that vehicle inside and he is ready comfortable look at the environment look at the road ahead uh, sees that uh, vehicle besides or behind through the side mirrors or uh, you know um, uh, other indicators Uh, so that you would uh, take a appropriate decision on abc or steering system and the vehicle has been given an input and the vehicle is ridden on the road ground conditions and then it meets uh, three important performance requirement what are those three important performance requirement it is performance simply called or uh, second one is uh, these are important characteristic of the vehicle would say if they are a uh, mate uh, then you say the vehicle performance is good the vehicle handling is good or the vehicle ride is good so what are these uh, uh, three aspects these are the outcome and uh, these all are influenced by the dynamic aspects of your vehicle so what do you mean by performance the performance of the vehicle can uh, be represented as how good the vehicle can uh, gain its speed in the uh, shortest period how good it is in gaining its acceleration or how good i can immediately stop my vehicle or if i have to go uphill how can i uh, gain my vehicle without stopping so is it going to have uh, 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 good pull ability to go up uh, even to tow a vehicle so these are all something that we call as a performance of the vehicle if that is all done it is good 
So the performance vehicle is always on a straight motion. It's uh, it's mostly considered to be a 1D motion uh, uh, most of the time. But this also play on a 2D motion, wherein uh, you see this handling aspects come. So handling aspects is what uh, you see the vehicle is not always uh, uh, expected to go on a road on a straight. It has to go on a you know, curved road or it has to take a lot of diversions. In that case, the input steering how uh, your vehicle is going to behave. So are you able to handle your vehicle the way you want uh, through uh, giving a steering input is what is uh, uh, looked at by the term called the handling. And what is ride? The ride is something how comfortable you are when you are driving your vehicle. Do you feel uh, uh, fatigue? Do you feel uh, uh, more of vibration or noise from the vehicle? So that is what is uh, uh, talked on this uh, uh, ride. So if you have your vehicle which is meeting all these three uh, um, nicely, that means the dynamic aspects of vehicle is uh, appropriately accounted while designing the vehicle. So that's essentially what this uh, uh, now brings in the whole perspective of a vehicle dynamic course, uh, which uh, uh, represented through this nice flow chart with an interaction between driver, vehicle and ground system. So let's look at this. So what is this? I'm going to just put one one slide for all these three to have an idea. So longitudinal dynamics. So performance, when you say it is called longitudinal dynamics. So what do you mean by longitudinal dynamics? It is uh, ahead of a straight motion, right? So that is why the word longitudinal dynamics. So we will look at there are access system in a vehicle, access system in your tire and road interaction. There is access system fixed on the ground. So when you have this access system understood, uh, you will uh, exactly understand that what is this uh, longitudinal dynamics or lateral dynamics or ride dynamics. So uh, you will look at your vehicle uh, free body diagram whenever you have to go in for uh, doing your uh, longitudinal dynamics to understand what are various system of forces that are acting on your vehicle. For example, you look at here, you have an aerodynamic force. You have uh, the total vehicle weight of two components. One is uh, perpendicular to the ground, other one is acting along the slope down so that your vehicle has to go against these two uh, forces uh, as you see in this vehicle uh, uh, free body diagram. And also you see there is a drop bar uh, force and you see there is this force is what is called a D. Lambert's force because this is uh, your dynamic equilibrium free body diagram. So whenever you have a vehicle to accelerate, you will have this DL Lambert's force comes. Or you can say this is a Newton's uh, uh, law, sigma f is equal to ma. So this ma is what is the effect force. So every force you replace by ma, this is only here, in this direction is what is uh, the rest of fx uh, summation of force that you say. But if you have to bring it on this side, this vector uh, ma, and you say this, this is what is dynamic equilibrium that we say always that you know. So here, uh, this force is what is this uh, inertia force. At that time, this is called an inertia force. We all know that. So these are all the forces in uh, uh, longitudinal direction uh, 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 acting on a vehicle. Apart from that, you see the vehicle to uh, go because of the driving torque that comes. You see here, there is a traction develop. And uh, here also you see there is a traction force represent. That means this vehicle free body diagram here represents four wheel drive vehicle. So you have a dri driving um, uh, torque given and front axle as well as rear axle. And you see another interesting forces here R XF and R uh, XR. So these are called rolling resistant forces. They are manifested because of the property of your uh, tire, the tire material properties. How are they generated? That all we will see uh, as we look at it, say, uh, this course seriously. And you see this always on the ground, uh, uh, whether it is on a horizontal ground or an incline, it's because of a balance in vertical direction. So the balancing of this weight component perpendicular to ground is by uh, these two normal reactions uh, acting at the uh, wheel contact uh, uh, centers. So this is essentially a simple uh, uh, free body diagram and shows the basic forces which are acting on a vehicle which is accelerated up the hill and you see they are not concurrent system of forces that's very important you know the system of forces can be classified as concurrent parallel and general force system and here it is general force system the location of individual forces are uh, at the different places in the vehicle so that's what you have to see uh, uh, and uh, if you see this equation newton second law this MA is what is at the center, which will be pulling it up 
and that's what is an effect force. So when you are uh, doing that, uh, you, you can say that uh, it is translating up. Right? So uh, I'm just uh, explaining you this free body diagram, but we will write those equation. Our objective in this performance is so what is the maximum traction that can be developed if it is a front axle vehicle or rear axle vehicle uh, driven or it is driven by both. So those equations that we will uh, do and we will extend this from this passenger car to three axle vehicle like a stuck semi trailer and again uh, we will find out how can we get to your maximum traction uh, force. Uh, similarly, we will look at uh, what is the braking scenario of your vehicle. Uh, and uh, um, what are these advancements in electronics, uh, uh, anti-lock brake system or traction control system? Uh, these are all something that we are going to uh, learn from this uh, longitudinal dynamics aspects, right? And uh, um, look at uh, what is that uh, vehicle handling? That's called a lateral dynamics. So lateral dynamics is again uh, um, can be best understood by the simple model mathematical model which is called a bicycle model this model is called a lump to mass model but it's also called two degree freedom lateral and yaw model or it is also called a bicycle model so what is why is it called bicycle model the two wheels of the front are collapsed and considered to be one single wheel and two wheels of the rear axle are considered to be one single wheel and uh, you see these two wheels are connected by this uh, line of the frame that's a vehicle body so here uh, this is a simplified model because the suspension is not uh, uh, explicitly appearing here so the vehicle is only considered to be a bicycle of a frame which is connected front of wheel and the rear of wheel and which represent your vehicle and uh, this simple model though appearing simple but it is a very good model to understand complete lateral dynamic aspects uh, uh, means so uh, if you give a steering input see this delta is a steering input how your vehicle is going to be uh, uh, responding uh, uh, so if you are uh, going with the constant speed uh, what are steady state uh, response of your vehicle if you are uh, accelerating or braking during uh, your uh, steering input given so how the uh, transient scenario of a vehicle this is all something that we are going to uh, look at in vehicle handling aspects and also after understanding this vehicle handling aspect. So when I look at, say, I just have put this simple diagram in detail. This become very familiar to you later on uh, as you learn the course. And you'll be able to write necessary equations and you'll be able to convert those necessary equation into a convenient form called the state space form. And if you have ones that uh, representation of state space form equation, that's going to be very, very convenient to study. And another important aspect in lateral dynamics called the stability analysis of your vehicle. Uh, so, uh, how do you uh, consider the stability analysis? And there are something called tendency of vehicle. The vehicle behavior can be you know, understeer behavior, or neutral steer behavior, or oversteer behavior. And this oversteer behavior very much connected to the vehicle stability. So, these are all very interesting and you know very motivating to you all. Uh, not only you are going to look at so uh, detailed understanding of physics, also you are going to write down the necessary equations, and you would enjoy during the new course of learning this course. So this is what is in a brief uh, to have an idea or to play where I just have put this uh, slide for you or lateral dynamics uh, content. And you see now you are going to look at uh, what is called ride vertical dynamics. So this is exactly what performance the handling and ride is what was the vehicle characteristics which was in a first classical flow chart that we have seen. So the ride means it is vibration of your vehicle. So a vehicle can be modeled as simple as the two degree freedom model or two many degrees of freedom model up to 54, 108. You, you do not have a limitation of increasing or degrees of freedom model. People do work on ride and have um, uh, worked with the many degrees of freedom model. So if you look at here, uh, what is ride model? It is lump to mass spring damper model. It's a mechanical vibration model. You could have done your mechanical vibration course. Uh, your uh, advanced vibration course. So it's essentially uh, applying Newton's uh, Euler equation to uh, do your uh, study. So when I say write um, mathematical model, vibration model, you know importantly you should understand frequency, you should understand damping value, you should understand uh, what is called an amplitude of vibration. So this is exactly we are going to study. 
So you see here, this vehicle has got many degrees of freedom. Uh, here, this of second degree medium freedom ride model. So why is it called a seven degree freedom model? You look at here, this axis. There is an x axis, y axis, and z axis. So if you take your right hand and you are uh, uh, stretching your three fingers, index, middle, and the thumb, and uh, twisting the right hand like the way I show, uh, this is your longitudinal axis, this is your lateral axis, and this is your uh, uh, vertical axis. So, uh, if you look at the motion along this, uh, on the body, uh, here it's called a sprung mass, uh, the roll will be uh, rotation about uh, x-axis, pitch will be rotation about y-axis, and bounce will be uh, bouncing up and down. So, these are the three responses of vibration of your sprung mass. So, the entire vehicle can be discretized as sprung mass and an unsprung mass. So, what are unsprung mass? Your wheel, tire wheel assembly, axle, uh, anything below the vehicle body, those masses uh, can be lumped and they are called as a, an unsprung mass. And the sprung mass is the one which is vehicle body mass. So, this coordinate which is fixed at uh, the CG location of your uh, vehicle body represent what are the responses that is interested uh, in your vibration model. So, there are three degrees of freedom of these additionally. You have here you see uh, uh, these two masses which are uh, front two wheels, they are bounce models only here. And you see here it is solid axle connecting. So you will have bounce of this together and the pitching of this. Uh, it's not pitching, uh, the roll of your uh, roll of your uh, axle. So this can come down, this can go up. So uh, this is what is uh, uh, essentially seven degrees of freedom that represent on this. So you would be able to apply Newton's law and uh, write down the governing equation. And this governing equation can be represented in a convenient form uh, in state space form. And then you solve for uh, the all seven degrees natural frequencies and so on is what is the uh, requirement. But uh, we would be uh, more focused on, on two important model. One is called quarter car model uh, for right, wherein we have one fourth of this. You assume this entire vehicle uh, mass is uniformly distributed. So I'll take one fourth of the model and I will consider um, you know, sprung mass and unsprung mass. And they are connected by suspension here. This represents suspension. This represents your tire wheel assembly. Uh, it's elastic and damping nature. And it's in contact with the road undulation. So this model is quite a useful model for understanding bounds of it. And this model is quite a useful model for uh, deciding design aspect of your suspension. So um, this is what is uh, that we are going to study in detail. And you see there is a model called the pitch and bounce model. So, which is a couple model, you can have vehicle bouncing as well as pitching like this. And this is another two degree freedom model, very interesting uh, model, which can be worked out on the board. And uh, we are going to study these models in detail. So, that is all the aspect of uh, um, right. So, of course, when you say these are all uh, the three uh, characteristics that conforming the performance of the vehicle for design development as well as a different operating requirement. Uh, like an autonomous vehicle design or an e-vehicle design where complete architecture is going to be changed. You see the, um, there are more space inside your vehicle and an e-vehicle, like you have your um, uh, um, vehicle rear the space uh, in a dicky, you will also have in the front, uh, the complete engine cabin is removed, so you can have more space here. And it's all um, the placement of your uh, um, electric drives and um, your um, uh, battery uh, in an e-vehicle uh, is going to change your uh, complete inertial properties of your vehicle. What do I mean by inertial properties of vehicle? Your uh, CG of your vehicle location may be different than that of an IC engine vehicle. Your um, you know, rotational inertia of your vehicle is going to be different. There are very less number of rotational elements. Um, maybe you do not have a, a transmission system like an IC engine based vehicle. You have manual operating. Uh, transmission system. So those all transmission system will be eliminated and we will have uh, uh, straight away uh, driving wheels. So these are all some uh, uh, architectural uh, aspects of difference of your e-vehicle and your conventional IC engine based vehicle. So these are going to influence your dynamic aspect. So the course what you study and these uh, three aspects of your vehicle performance, handling and ride is uh, not confined only with uh, uh, one kind of passenger cars. So if you understand this with an IC engine based vehicle, now what is going to study, you would be able to extend it uh, comfortably onto uh, an e-mobility. E 
will be able to uh, comfortably extend it on uh, design or uh, making uh, development of an autonomous vehicle if you are good at your uh, handling and uh, you would be able to have your advancement of uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, which could uh, easily connect uh, very well your vehicle to an environment uh, where you drive and uh, it can help you to have an uh, uh, advancement in traffic flow control it can make your vehicle uh, uh, independent um, driverless uh, in a uh, well specified or defined um, uh, uh, um, uh, traffic or defined uh, 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 road flow with that all so that's what uh, that you would uh, see that so this uh, aspects are important to study right so that uh, we see that uh, driver vehicle ground system that we have talked on so road surface undulation is very important aspect to you know, uh, vehicle uh, behavior so the uh, uh, slide that currently that you look at uh, shows the distraction discontinuities on the road which are going to be vulnerable in point view of uh, you know, your vehicle dynamic aspect so in case you do not have your vehicle um, uh, uh, steering control or you are just not uh, worried uh, no your steering input would be disturbed by these discontinuities so though you may go on a vehicle in a straight path like you see on uh, uh, this picture c uh you see there is a, a pothole suddenly so you drive uh, you are at a high speed and suddenly you are going on it and you forget to have a hold of your steering so your steering input suddenly may be different and your vehicle can go unstable right you see there are some warning uh, 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 rumble strips on this roads which are mandatory on highways to give you warning that when you are dozing uh, suddenly to uh, get back on the track uh, so though it is mandatory but you see that that would also give us some annoying input and there are connections uh, uh, um, in the uh, bridges so these are all some of the discontinuities which are uh, uh, appearing generally in vehicle if they are not properly uh, taken care by uh, highway authorities or the road maintenance authority so this uh, picture i have just put so that what kind of input that can come in your vehicle uh, so that would uh, not only uh, adversely affect the steering input in case you do not hold the steering but adversely affect your right aspects of your vehicle and uh, sudden uh, input these are all something called uh, spike input see it's come it is like an impulse to the vehicle when you give an impulse to the vehicle it is going to excite an vehicle with the wider frequency spectrum so it would uh, make an annoying effect in the vibration model of your vehicle that you consider so you get uh, your uh, driver would uh, be getting more amplitude of vibration that comes into uh, him so amplitude of vibration when i say it's very important so the amplitude of vibration vibration cannot be prevented isolated completely but amplitude of vibration can be uh, minimum so tolerable so there are standards uh, iso 2631 or uh, janeves uh, sai criteria which will be also looking at in uh, uh, specific when we do our right aspects uh, uh, we need to meet our vehicle how correct okay? and uh, we may start with the deterministic model and we need to understand actually how this uh, inputs are there these are random inputs so how your road random input can be modeled and uh, uh, the response can be found uh, uh, at uh, uh, driver uh, contact points um, uh, is all uh, what is that study about the ride aspects of your vehicle so this picture just i have put it uh, to uh, connect your road ground conditions uh, for the vehicle so this is all are one uh, one way but importantly uh, the tire dynamics is very important because you have this important uh, uh, component in a vehicle tire wheel assembly and that is not there it is not the vehicle so the vehicle cannot come out of your uh, uh, manufacturing line in the company so the vehicle has been tested in all aspects and it has been taken out and uh, you no know, dealers uh, it is coming is because of uh, law, important uh, component in a vehicle tire wheel assembly so its dynamics as what is important to meet uh, all this so you know basic function of a tire to support not only the weight of the vehicle also to provide ride performance handling nature of the vehicle so by cushioning the vehicle over the surface irregularity just now we have seen we would meet the ride requirement 
by providing sufficient traction or driving braking you would be able to meet the performance of your vehicle to by providing uh, the tire dynamics would provide an adequate steering control and directional stability so that your vehicle is always handleable and safe vehicle to say right so let us look at some important uh, axis system and the forces and moments uh, which you would be always looking at in our course so this wheel what is appearing uh, is a wheel torque uh, written here so this one wheel represent your tire wheel assembly you may say that is a central plane of your wheel so i just uh, slice a uh, uh, wheel uh, along its axis at its uh, uh, mid uh, center or mid plane of your tread if you look at this is what is your wheel and you see the coordinate system x y z like right hand coordinate system but it is twisted like that so this is your x axis this is your y axis positive and this is your z axis so you see that is uh, here so this is x axis wherein you have your tractive force fx expected to come along this axis correct so this is the direction of uh, wheel heading but the wheel is not rolling along this it is going at an angle alpha so that is the direction of wheel travel and you see here there is an angle defining called a slip angle why the slip angle how does it been manifested all we'll see later but this is very important uh, angle which is uh, mandatory uh, uh, in our tire contact patch to appear and you see this is also not exactly perpendicular to ground it is at an angle here called an angle gamma which is called a camber angle so we will see uh, and this is a positive camber angle you can also have negative camber angle you will see what is them uh, later right and um, uh, the force along x direction called a tractive force the force along y direction is called a lateral force important to maintain on the uh, car the direction of the vehicle is controlled in uh, uh, 2d motion is because of fy present and of course this normal force is very important if normal force is not there vehicle is not on the ground and there is no traction there is no fy so these are three important forces are uh, are the components of the force that is uh, uh, acting between uh, tire and uh, road interaction and that is resolved in these three components and they are given specific name like this so we look at these three components of forces and there are three moments of, of course there is an additional force called the rolling resistance force interesting we look at it uh, it's a special force it is always going to resist your uh, uh, motion uh, in x direction so this is the resistance force uh, how is it manifested all let us see that later and this force also can create a moment called a rolling resistance moment about y axis the moment about x axis what is called a over turning moment and the moment about uh, vertical axis is called an aligning torque moment aligning torque right so this is the tire axis system so where is this axis uh, in your vehicle ground uh, system it is in the contact patch center fixed and this is again the same with uh, uh, more uh, uh, pictorial uh, representation i found it's from other textbook so but what we discuss is the same you can look at it again and another important axis system is what is called vehicle axis system see this is uh, fixed in the uh, vehicle body so we just have seen in the mathematical model of ride and sprung mass 7 degree freedom model so the same vehicle cg location the axis is fixed uh, and the positive x y z axis are represented here and uh, what are the responses that the vehicle will undergo due to this uh, action of forces is what is represented so you see there is uh, uh, forward velocity in x direction because of that the vehicle translate there is also a lateral velocity of the vehicle that is essentially because of your body slip angle we'll see them in detail and um, uh, if you see there is a velocity in y direction means uh, if this magnitude compared to this is very negligible but small value otherwise what do you feel if this is also more and this is also more maybe this will not go in straight line it will go in a curved path but even you go in a straight path you may also have this slight value of uy uh, but it is not going to uh, go in this direction you know physical meaning of velocity means uh, movement but uh, you will not see movement in lateral direction but this force would also be existing there <clears throat> and of course the vertical velocity which is in your vehicle model that you have seen vehicle can bounce up and down and there are three uh, responses rotations one is roll velocity because of over turning moment another one is pitch velocity which is because of uh, not only uh, uh, moment due to 
rolling resistant moment that is manifested as a force uh, it's not only because of driving torque or braking torque so this all are irresponsible when you apply driving torque suddenly or braking torque uh, um, these two will be added with your rolling resistant moment so you'll have a net uh, uh, torque that is acting on uh, the uh, wheels uh, and that effect on your vehicle so your vehicle can have your pitch motion um, like this so it can uh, squat front or go back like that uh, motion is what is pitch velocity and then uh, your uh, yaw velocity yaw velocity to see you should see from the top you should look at the ground and your vehicle orientation would change uh, go straight and then it takes a right turn you say that uh, this all you could see if your vehicle is looked at from the top like that so here is the vehicle so when the vehicle goes uh, when i see from the top this is my cg location this is my cg location. it's a turn the orientation change is because of the yaw velocity <coughs> and then another important coordinate system this is again what we discussed uh, uh, this is an another important coordinate system called earth fixed coordinate system wherein you have your uh, axis which is fixed on the ground and you have an another axis which is fixed in the uh, vehicle and with respect to that you would be able to uh, have your uh, um, uh, generic uh, newton euler equation defined and you would say that what is vehicle heading angle cruise angle and uh, actual vehicle path is this uh, strike slip angle so there's something uh, there's lateral velocity because of that you have <coughs> vehicle side slip angle and so on and uh, you see here steer angle and the uh, because it's a front steer vehicle so this is another important coordinate system which should be useful for you if you look at more than one vehicle on the uh, road and you should have a fixed uh, earth coordinate and look at uh, all vehicles absolute motion from there or uh, uh, looking at one vehicle motion being from other vehicle and so on to do uh, its relative motion study so this coordinate system also should be always remembered very important and uh, with that all uh, briefing uh, i would uh, uh, formally uh, look at uh, uh, make you to look at what are the course content this course is uh, described in your syllabus copy by eight modules so we have uh, module one uh, introduction to tire mechanics uh, and module two longitudinal dynamics module three lateral dynamics module four also covers longitudinal as well as lateral dynamics together like you call it as a vehicle stability and module five is uh, special again steering and suspension mechanisms and its influence on vehicle uh, uh, um, uh, lateral vehicle uh, stability of your vehicle that we are going to study and module six is uh, dedicated for your ride and then module seven is having an introduction of course uh, there are students uh, registered for your uh, nvh course uh, elective but uh, those others no need to worry uh, you have an introduction uh, of uh, noise vibration harshness and uh, uh, which is again uh, going to append your vertical dynamic study and so there are some contemporary issues uh, that we will listen from uh, industry uh, people um, so that we would have a, a cohesive uh, understanding and uh, learning of this uh, course content and what are various course objectives so the objective is to enable all of you to understand the role of tire mechanics for vehicle dynamics enable you all to understand longitudinal lateral and vertical dynamics and the issues involved in uh, uh, such as braking traction vehicle control and stability uh, to prepare you all for to understand significance of steering and suspension mechanisms for vehicle dynamics and to demonstrate uh, uh, you all would be able to demonstrate at the end of the course uh, make you all to demonstrate application of fundamentals of vibrations and acoustics uh, or nvh perspectives of, of the vehicle and you would also understand the importance of what is model analysis transfer path analysis which are uh, currently people uh, know uh, r and d people vehicle development especially on automotive nvh side people are working are exploiting these uh, techniques uh, to the maximum extent so these are all the expected uh, course objective uh, i was uh, talking on you this 40 minutes uh, uh, i think now these objectives are very well clear to you as we have taken a lot of statements and supports uh, during this lecture and the outcome outcome is that uh, the skill uh, the talent or uh, what is that you would do uh, once you finish your course or what is that you will enhance already you are good at uh, uh, the points is what is uh, called an outcome 
So the outcome here is you would be able to predict the necessary forces and moments during tire road interaction through various tire models, some of the tire models in our course. And then you'll be able to compute maximum traction, optimum braking distribution, very important for stability point of view, and on two wheel vehicles as well as three wheel vehicles, three axle vehicles, not three wheels, two axle and three axle vehicles. And you'll be able to demonstrate uh, the fundamental governing equation of uh, all these aspects that we have been discussing in brief uh, with an application of state space approach. Because this is very, very interesting uh, simplified approach, uh, which is uh, itself is a uh, complete uh, domain of modern control system. It's itself a course. Uh, it's another uh, specialization uh, uh, in electrical engineering in core. And it is now more exploited in our mechanical engineering, looking at vehicle dynamic aspect. So one good should be good at uh, state space representation of these equations, uh, especially on lateral dynamics that we will be applying it in our study. And then uh, another objective is that you would be able to calculate, uh, compute that uh, steady state and transient response of the vehicle during cornering. Maybe um, uh, you would be able to uh, extend your understanding of role of suspension for uh, rollover stability of your vehicle study. <coughs> And you are able to, uh, you would showcase that you would evaluate uh, suspension uh, for vibration, isolation, rattle space, or uh, road holding using an appropriate model. So when I say this is an appropriate model, the tried model, two degree freedom model, what was called the quarter car model. This is sufficient to talk on this that we will see. Then you will be identified. So identify current literature. So you would have to comfortably read your current literature and necessary modern tools to apply and do some vehicle development. Uh, um, so you, you, you would confidently look at these aspects uh, because of uh, your J component that comes into picture. So this is all the expected course outcome. So with that, uh, uh, we had come to the end of uh, today's lecture and I would uh, quickly share uh, you some of the points uh, on uh, uh, rubrics of this assessment and stop in another two, three minutes. Uh, so we are aware you all have this academic calendar, uh, the key dates. So what are the key dates here is CAT 1, right? CAT 1 date. Uh, it is on 7th, since it's A1 slot, it's on 7th. CAT 2, it's on 19th April and your final exam is on 31st May. So these are three important dates for you uh, that you know. Accordingly, I just have uh, made uh, uh, the course. So this is your syllabus copy, whatever the course objectives and outcome that I have put it on the slide. And the detailed description of your individual modules are available. And you have here the textbooks. Uh, um, this is uh, Jasser textbook. Uh, is a very good textbook. Uh, you would see there are a lot of question answers uh, presented and uh, one. Uh, of course, the, all the books, uh, the reference books are very uh, good books. We would be uh, uh, learning from the reference book most of the time. Of course, we'd also refer back uh, the textbook, uh, maybe useful for your exam point of view. Uh, but most of the time we are going to read this Wong textbook and uh, Gillespie, Thomas uh, uh, D. Gillespie, Fundamentals of Vehicle Dynamics. And uh, for NEH aspect, this book is a treasure. You can buy and uh, uh, keep it with you. Uh, Professor uh, Sujata Ma'am's book from IIT uh, Madras. Uh, you would uh, have this as uh, not only for learning this course, also it's a reference uh, for many of the NEH engineers in industry. So you, these are all something uh, uh, that you would uh, uh, be able to go through. I would uh, provide this syllabus copy as well in the course page. And uh, another important uh, uh, thing is, uh, this one, uh, what is that? Uh, this uh, assessment rubrics. So look at these are your assessment rubrics for the course. Uh, quickly that I will go through. CAT 1 on 7th March. It is an individual exam. 50 marks examination maximum you will answer and 15 marks weightage. You know that already one semester finished. So syllabus coverage expected is module 1 and module 2. Uh, CAT 2 exam is 19th April 2021. Again, uh, an individual exam. The exam one and two may be open notes test if it is online. You are coming uh, here for CAT 1. Maybe it's a closed book, uh, CAT 1. CAT 2 will be open notes test. Uh, then the syllabus coverage for that is the next two, three modules for CAT 2. 
and fat is on 31st may uh, uh, individual 100 marks and 40 marks weightage will be taken from there and you have a syllabus for that is an entire all seven modules right so this comes out to be how much mark uh, you would have 40 and here 15 15 uh, 30 so 70 marks uh, remaining 30 marks for your digital assignment i'm not going to conduct quizzes maybe i'll conduct quizzes uh, for your better understanding to check but um, uh, you would have a digital assignment i have felt this is quite useful for students as you learn the course as i teach you would apply on a uh, um, assignment so here the groups are same group uh, formed by j component i do not want to have different groups and have a, a difficult time so if we have uh, like a maximum of five to six students in a group that you formed uh, yet i have not received in the uh, channel your response but i hope that you would uh, provide it uh, today or tomorrow and wednesday 11 o'clock we are going to have a period only for j component i would uh, talk on what all your senior students have worked and what is the expectation J component and so on in detail. So uh, this digital assignment here 30 marks. Uh, so review one is uh, 3rd March. Uh, you have to upload individually. Though you are in group, there are six students in a group. Uh, maybe it is the same. Everyone is doing it. Uh, you can divide your work in different aspects according to the expectation for uh, DA1, DA2, DA3. And um, uh, but everyone has to upload in VTOP so that uh, the uh, assessment become easier, convenient. And then uh, review to 10 marks, uh, 16th April is the due date. Uh, these two are only submission. And uh, final review is 15 marks weightage where you have to do an oral presentation. And uh, uh, you would uh, have your due to submit is 28th, the last instructional day, uh, the report submission. So what are the tasks for digital assignment one? So you need to select a vehicle and the, the details of uh, technical specification, particularly the tires, uh, the dimensions of the tires all. Uh, and uh, you may use uh, to present your uh, data. So you may not put a screenshot. You have to refer to the vehicle chosen, their websites and their uh, uh, vehicle uh, uh, guidebook, which is given to the service book given to the customer. Uh, there is no limitation to collect the information on a vehicle and uh, you have to make it in an Excel, uh, 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 all the uh, information converted, uh, you should have that in hand. And uh, in case you do not get any data, you should assume that uh, data, maybe you select a vehicle of uh, SUVs or uh, sedan class or uh, um, hatchback, um, uh, no, then accordingly you should have your assumed data in case uh, there are uh, uh, data which is not explicitly available for you. And then drawing of free body diagrams, uh, determination of CG height of the vehicle. There is a technique uh, through a free body diagram which you can find the CG location. Uh, and then uh, this all uh, uh, summary in a PPT. And the file should be named in the same way. So for example, first student of a class, uh, uh, you have to put, uh, you suppose he belongs to G1 or he belongs to group number three. Then it's G3 underscore number underscore DA1. This is the file name of an individual upload. Uh, as well as a group uh, which would be there. And then review one example, there are some vehicles here uh, which you can choose, not necessarily the same what is listed. You can go ahead with your choice. And then uh, DA2 task. So this task, what you do, would have five marks weightage. And then task two, 10 marks weightage, wherein uh, as you learn uh, the portion for the CAT1, longitudinal dynamics, you should apply with those data and do all necessary calculations. Uh, whatever that I'm going to teach during uh, parallelly. So this is your DA2. And DA3 is uh, the extension of your understanding with the data that you collected. Maybe you're not collected uh, first to site and you do this uh, lateral dynamic aspect, right dynamic aspect, you know additional data. So you can always update your uh, data of DA1. And uh, final uh, uh, DA3 is your final submission, review three, oral presentation and the report submission. And that should meet, you uh, know, exhibit the course outcome that we have discussed today's class. So this is essentially the expected rubrics for three credits aspect, theoretical classroom based learning. So we have to still discuss on J component, which I'm going to do on this Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And also our class on Wednesday starts at morning. Uh, uh, I have borrowed a class from uh, Ashok sir. Uh, as I have uh, compensated last week, I was not able to take. So we would meet on coming Wednesday morning, 8 o'clock again for the class.
with that note, uh, I would stop lecturing today. I think I did my job of orienting the scores on your mind and giving you an overview and assessment uh, rubrics and configuration. And uh, if you have any doubts, uh, we can quickly ask. Uh, otherwise, we may proceed for the next lecture. I would stop sharing this uh, slide. Any doubts, anything? There are 62 students present at the moment. I am downloading the attendance sheet. Of course, I have posted your attendance in the last class, the last week, uh, which are not taken place. Uh, I would compensate them uh, in this week. So today we had a lecture and we will have uh, Wednesday three periods. And next week, uh, I would expect you to join. I will confirm that on this Wednesday. Join at 7 30 instead of 8 in the morning on Monday. So that uh, no, I would uh, make up those classes which uh, last last week. So that is a note uh, to read that. Like any doubt at the point, uh, any that you to clarify? Uh, do you have an idea overview of this course clearly? I need a response from you to complete. Otherwise, uh, I will call a name and uh, expect the response. In case no response is there, I will make a note of it. Murali. Um, uh, Manalan, Murali Manalan, Deep, Ansar, Sir, sir. Keshav. Sir, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm not taking yes, attendance. I just need an response from you. Did you take the overview of the course? Huh? Yes, Murali. Do you get an idea of the course? What are the content? Are you getting excited to go ahead with the learning course? So, so we have class at nine, sir. Yeah, I understand. Just you respond, and then I will stop it now. I hope that you had a uh, clear. Uh, I stop recording. You can leave now. I have downloaded the attendance. You may leave now. Right? Yeah. Good Thank day you, to sir. all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir.